Hi, welcome to Teardown Tuesday. Now, as part of the uh, recent Teardown for this St. Jude medical pacemaker monitoring uh, system, it came with one of these uh, medical grade uh, power supplies and uh, everyone wanted me to tear this down, tear down this plug pack, this war wart, and see what's inside a proper made in Germany. There we go, beauty. Hi to all my German viewers. Uh, made in Germany, uh, medical grade, which um, it would come under certain uh, type standards. Basically, it's going to have increased uh, clearance and uh, you know, you know, much better build quality than your one hung low one uh, from China. So everyone wanted to take a look at it. So let's go. And these medical devices, as I explained in the previous uh, teardown, everything is medical grade isolation in here from uh, the clearance on the uh, ground planes to the uh, type approval used on the transformer. There we go. I actually tore out uh, that medical uh, grade uh, transformer, you know, the high value resistors, all that uh, sort of jazz and a uh, medical grade opto coupler as well for uh, transferring the data and of course to power the whole thing at the top you need this medical grade plug pack for the isolation uh, part of it. So that's going to be the big difference. You see, should see a big difference in build and uh, both clearage and uh, creepage distances. Yes, they are uh, different things, clearance, clearance and creepage, as I'll explain, no doubt, when we open it up. But uh, yeah, that's going to be the difference between this made in Germany medical grade plug pack. Uh, it's just a five volt, uh, you know, five watt uh, plug pack. And a one hung low brand, uh, you know, just off the shelf consumer plug pack. So here we go. And for reference, here's all the stuff on the back, and it's from a company called uh, Fryro, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Yes, it is uh, made in Germany, and it Anyway, uh, Fryro uh, specialise in like uh, you know medical grade uh, plug packs, just like this power supplies and things like that. So it's probably one of the most reputable uh, ones you can get, and uh, you know is going to be a pretty good example of a good medical grade uh, power supply. In this case, it doesn't have it on here, but this is going to be designed to meet uh, the IEC medical equipment uh, requirements, which is uh, 60601-1, and so it's going to meet those requirements. I don't know even if you can uh, download that you usually got to pay for these IEC uh, standards but anyway in this particular one uh, I think I found uh, some data on it and this particular one has an MTBF a mean time between fire of uh, 200,000 hours I'm not sure if that's part of the standard or whether or not it's just a you know an internal uh, thing from uh, Fryro and of course you can see all the type approvals on it and yeah these things aren't just you know slapped on by the manufacturer these would have been uh, you know fully tested and uh, fully complied absolutely no doubt and um, I do like these plug packs with the uh, sleeve if I can get it off usually they're not that uh, a bit easier to get off but anyway um this isn't particular to these medical uh, ones a lot of plug packs these days which are supplied with consumer products have now have these plug-in uh, replaceable plugs so instead of giving you you know five plug packs with every product or different leads and things like that it's much cheap or, or different leads anyway with different plugs um, they just give you this these little adapters that include all five in the package and you can see the uh, pads on the PCB uh, down in there. There we go. So they just make direct contact down in there. So there's probably just one single PCB in inside this entire thing. So let's crack it open and have a look. Unfortunately, this looks like it's uh, ultrasonically uh, welded. So I may have to uh, get the Dremel out for this. You usually can try and uh, crack them open from the outside by banging on them and uh, stuff like that. But yeah, this one uh, doesn't seem to uh, budge at all. So yep, Dremel time. First of all, I'm going to start out on the case here and look at the huge amount of overlap on this case, how it uh, slides all the way on like that. Wow, that's a lot of overlap. I'm not sure. I don't think that's part of the requirements, probably just their particular uh, type. But geez, you know, if that thing uh, explodes inside, it's probably not going to, uh, you know, um, come apart in a hurry or uh, explode out. Very nice. And look at the bottom side. The first thing that strikes you is the clear delineation between primary side over here, secondary side. Massive isolation slot down in there. Not only just the isolation slot, but the physical uh, creepage distance there. And these big uh, long 
uh, optocoupler packages like this for extra voltage isolation. The reason why they're that long is because they're probably uh, 4 kilovolt rated. We'll have to look at the parts on that. So don't quote me, but I believe that uh, the specs for these things is uh, 4 kilovolts uh, clearance between... Uh, primary uh, se secondary I could be uh, wrong there but uh, anyway it's you know it's much higher than usual and just look at that delineation absolutely enormous so they've got the slot cut out in here they've got the slot all the way in here and the traces are all the way back they haven't just run them over auto routed them willy-nilly over here and stuff like that so really absolutely incredible and if we take a look at the uh, Top side there, yes, of course, it's not a FR4 board, it's um, a class board, it's a, you know, a phenolic uh, base type board, but uh, nothing wrong with that, very common in uh, low cost, once again, they still have to, you know, shave cost on these things, but look at that uh, transformer, that looks beautifully wrapped that looks uh you know looks like it's worth every cent, they've got a little uh, heat sink, that's actually a heat sink down in there, you can see the package mount is surface mount, uh, package actually mounted onto that it's not bolted it's actually um soldered or welded onto there but they've used that uh, right angle um bracket they've got a thicker one over here for the uh, secondary uh side heat sink we'll take a closer look at that but yeah look at that that's just beautiful oh so I mentioned before the terms clearance and creepage, and yes, they are different, and they do get uh, confused a lot. Here's what they mean. Uh, clearance is the physical air distance between two points. So, you know, if we've got this point here and this point here, then it's the difference in free air between those two items. That is the clearance. But creepage is not the air gap. Creepage is the physical distance along the surface from that point. So from this surface all the way across, the shortest path on the surface across over to there, for example, or yeah, from there over to there, that would be the creepage distance. So in terms of uh, like a board contamination and stuff like that, there's two different uh, term, uh, terms there and two different requirements, clearance and creepage. So just keep that in mind. Uh, so that's what you get in with the slot there. You're getting the clearance is the same. So if you had a pin there and a pin there, the clearance is exactly the same. So any high voltage across those two points can just arc over like that, um, arc over air at a certain voltage. But then your uh, creepage might be different because your board might be contaminated, could have dust on it, could have residue left over from the soldering process, manufacturing, people's uh, fingerprints, whatever it happens to be, or a bug, or I don't know, you know, dirt and grime and all sorts of stuff driven by fans in equipment, things like that, that builds up on the board. So if you've got a physical slot on there, then that increases your creepage distance like that so you don't have to worry about surface contamination your clearance remains the same but then your clearance becomes uh, the minimum specification for your board instead of the creepage becoming the minimum specification for the board and often it's the 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 clearance you control and is going to be uh, fixed in your design and manufacturing process between two points but the uh, creepage distance, while is the same, you can actually get contamination. So that's why your creepage distance can actually uh, dominate your effect. So that's why they put those slots in there. Now, if this was me and I was doing real belt and braces design, like gilding the lily, then I would have actually routed out another slot underneath those opto optocouplers. But in this case, no, you can see that they haven't. The board, so the uh, creepage distance is going to be across the board under those packages. So, you know, in theory, you could get up moisture under those packages and then, uh, you know, de degrade your uh, isolation there. But, you know, they're obviously still doing, you know, still got a massive isolation there between uh, the pins on either side of those optocouplers there and I'm sure it more than meets the specification I'm you know there's a difference between meeting the specification and meeting it comfortably and really gilding the lily. Now one thing you may have noticed here is your typical uh, primary secondary suppression capacitor which you know is normally a um, you know an X class uh, capacitor to go between your primary and secondary there they haven't fitted that 
at all. And of course, they've put a slot under that to, uh, you know, eliminate your uh, creepage but uh, distance between there and there. So how they're actually keeping their EMC uh, compliance uh, in check there without the uh, suppression cap between uh, primary and secondary, I don't know. And uh, yeah, it might be um, interesting to go into the details on uh, something like that. But yeah, anyway, obviously they um, deem isolation to be, uh, I guess, more important than uh, EMC in this particular case. Or maybe they've tested it and they just didn't need it. But yeah, it's, it was certainly designed to be in there, but they decided not to fit it. And the Opto Coupler, no surprise for finding a Vache part in there. They're the best in the business, of course. Uh, TCLT1005. Let's go to the data sheet. And here it is, the TCLT100 series. And here we go. Here it is, creepage distance. Look at this, 8 mm, greater than 8 mm, hence the wide package there. Specifically, look at all the uh, type approvals, of course, and applications, uh, switch mode, power supplies. And look at this, it's got more agency approvals that you can poke a multimeter probe at. Unbelievable. And there's an agency table somewhere in the data sheet as well. And if we have a look down here, what are we talking about uh, in terms of isolation? Look, isolation coupler, isolation test voltage. Ah, sorry about the selection thing. It's really annoying. Um, v, uh, ISO, look, 5,000 volts RMS. Beauty. That's what you want. So, you know, absolutely enormous uh, creepage distance on this thing. And in terms of the optocoupler itself, well, 5,000 volts RMS. You know, that's just absolutely enormous. And that's why they've chosen this thing because it, because of its isolation characteristics and its uh, type approvals as well. And look, you know, they really go to town on this opto coupler, as, as you'll see in the a uh, cheap one. Then you know they just use some crap, you know, one hung low brand opto coupler, and it's just you know absolutely useless. So yeah, if you want to do it right, you've got to use a proper branded part like this with all the agency approvals and everything else. Otherwise, you know, when you submit, if you design your plug pack and go and submit it for all those approvals. Uh, unless you want to fake it, you know, you're crap manufacturing, you fake those sort of things, um, but nobody's going to buy, no reputable company's going to buy your product, especially medical uh, stuff, they're not going to take the risk, so when you go and um, uh, submit it for approval uh, to the agencies, they're going to look at, they'll look at this data sheet, what optocoupler have you used, show us the, you know, manufacturing information on your isolation uh, transformer, everything else, so all that stuff, and once they see, oh yes, this, you know, tick, 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 it's already got all these agent agency approvals, yep, awesome. And the controller there is a TH20594, and I wasn't able to get any uh, immediate data on that. That's a switch mode uh, controller for the primary side there. And, well, it's, you know, one of these uh, Chinese jobs. I don't know uh, what brand or, or whatever, and uh, data sheet seems to be a bit hard to come by. But if I can find it, I'll link it in down below. I'm surprised that they didn't use a name brand one there, actually. Now, if we have a look at the input here, it goes around to a series protection resistor here and uh, straight over to the diode bridge over there. And then the diode bridge is, uh, oh, there we go. There's our inline fuse if you're wondering where the fuse was. No, that's not a capacitor. That's an 800 milliamp uh, fuse, once again, with all the requisite uh, type approvals on it. So, yes, they haven't just bunged in anything there. They've used a top brand. I don't, offhand, I don't know uh, who the manufacturer it is, but, yeah, VDU, uh, underwriters, like, you know, the whole work. So they haven't just, like, whacked in an M205 on its ass, you know, from some, uh, you know, one hung low vendor in uh, the... Uh, you know, the Shenzhen market, they've, you know, they've really gone to town to choose the uh, fuse properly, and that's probably part of all the type approval as well. And that common mode choke on the input there, look at that, they've really gone to town there, a bit messy on the wind in there, but hey, you know, look at the shroud on it, beautiful. Now at first glance, these main electrolytic caps here, JH uh, brand CD263, they look like you know, one hung low Chinese ones, they are 105 degrees C uh, rated. I've never heard of them before, but I believe they are from actually a German company called uh, Zhanghai, which, yeah, sounds Chinese, but hey, it's Zhanghai Europe. They're a German 
Um, maybe made in Germany. And interestingly, the other brand in here is a Rubicon. There we go. No problems with a Rubicon uh, whatsoever. Once again, that's the YXA series. I think 105 degrees C rated. No problems with Rubicon, but it's interesting that they combine the two uh, manufacturers there. And there are, that's 400 volts, so they're all 400 uh, volt caps. So the uh, JH ones are there and over here as well, exactly the same. Unfortunately, on the second side, they haven't exactly uh, gone with the best. They've gone for uh, Samsung there, which, you know, <laughs> isn't exactly uh, known for the best quality, but, eh, you know, they're okay. So they've cut a little bit of cost there. Not sure why. Oh, and by the way, the other electrolytic cap in here is uh, JH brand as well. And you can see a nicely heat shrunk vertical inductor there. Nice attention to detail. They haven't just uh, left the wires hanging out willy nilly. Now the heat sink for the diode here is interesting because it's uh, not screwed in. It's pop riveted in. Yes, they do have heat sink uh, compound behind that. And then it's uh, designed to press fit into the board. So yeah, rather, rather unusual, but I'm sure quite effective. It looks like we have some sort of uh, PCB based uh, spark gap there. I haven't seen that design before. It's uh, rather unusual, but they've removed the uh, solder mask and they've done deliberately sharp points on it. So it's got to be some sort of uh, spark gap. i tell you what I'm not that keen on though, is the uh, creepage distance in here and the clearance. This is a 400 volt rated uh, cap, as you saw soldered on the other side here. And they've got the trace and this resistor is very close to it. And well, I don't know. I gotta presume that they've uh, done their homework there, but yeah, geez, I don't know. And that spark gap up there, by the way, there's the other uh, high voltage cap across there. That's the other 400 volt uh, JH brand one. So once again, not a huge amount of uh, you know creepage distance between those two traces in there so yeah but they've probably done their homework i don't know offhand i'd have to uh give them the benefit of the doubt and uh you know otherwise you need the schematic to run through and uh compare everything now i've gone and sucked the transformer out of this thing so that we can uh, unwind that and see what it's like but uh anyway i it bought up what's happening on this side on the uh, secondary side of the circuit. I don't really care much for the uh, primary side, but this secondary side here is rather interesting. And I've done a little bit of reverse engineering, not complete. And here it is. Here's a Dave CAD uh, drawing of it. And it's rather unusual. Look at the output rectifier diode. It's actually between the two coils on here. There's two coils between, one between the outer pins like that and one between the inner pins like that on this secondary side and they've actually got the rectifier diode between the two like that it's really quite weird and then they've got another uh, signal diode down here and this is one of the opto couplers here this is this uh, first opto coupler and that's uh, directly across the transformer output now there's some more circuitry around here which i haven't uh, bothered because i'm lazy to actually uh, decode that and you can do that yourself if you're really keen um, but yeah, it's once again, it's across the uh, the transformer output, and it's going to a second op opto coupler there, which is then uh, coupled back to the primary side. So we're going to have those two opto couplers and a rather unusual diode in between the two coils there. Hmm. Oops, I actually forgot the big ass uh, filter cap there. Of course, you've got to have that because it's just a basically a single wave uh, rectified with the uh, filter cap across there. And of course, the opto coupler feedback to ensure the five volt regulation on the output. And they've got some extra uh, filter in here with that uh, vertical heat shrunk output inductor, which we saw there. And of course, a good majority of our power dissipation is inside that rectifier diode. And of course, that's why it's on a heat sink there. There we go. It's an MBR1660. Uh, and for those playing along at home, there's the markings on the ferrite core, if you know what they mean. And by the way, the primary side has three windings on it. One between there and there, another between the two uh, inner ones, and another one between there and there as well. So let's unwrap this sucker and uh, see what's inside. You can see that interestingly on the outside 
it looks like they've got a winding on the outside of the ferrite. Just a couple of turns there. Nothing huge. So, so you've got to wonder to de-wrap this sucker first. You can see that winding around there is not enamel coated. There you go. That's interesting. It looked enamel coated under the wrap there. But uh, no, it's certainly not. So that is very curious. And no, that's not actually a winding because both... Uh, strands, of course, go back to the one point down here, and if it was a winding, it would be enamel uh, coated wire, of course, so it doesn't, you know, short out at that uh, point. So they've just, from that point there, they've just wrapped a couple of turns around there as, uh, yeah, I don't know. Hmm. So I'm not 100% sure of the why they've actually gone to the effort to do that. If anyone's got any. Uh, uh, definitive answers please let us know so I've taken that winding off and we've got a what looks like an e-core uh, transformer here why is it called a, an e-core well you can see the split there and there and there's almost certainly one going through the center as well so it's actually if you take just that one half and imagine that we'll probably see it when we take it apart is shaped like a letter E hence the name e-core and e-cores like this are extremely popular because they're um, really easy to wind and they're cheap. So, you know, but they don't, uh, they do form a closed magnetic system, but they don't offer any uh, inherent uh, shielding. Now you can start to see inside this, look at this big spongy stuff. I originally thought that that was right under separating the primary and the secondary, but it's not. You can see it's sort of like, just like an end stop there so like it's just a you know a a uh, like a spacer on the end of that there and you can see there's the primary winding under there and you can see but some of the primary winding is also on top actually wrapped over if i can take more of that mylar tape off but you can clearly see it it's wrapped over the top of that secondary winding so that's got to be the feedback loop there wrapped over the secondary so the primary side is tucked right on the uh, bottom there secondary is outside that uh, with this huge insulation on these uh, wires so there we go that's how we're getting uh, you know it's not just a in an enamel coating with a, a uh, mylar wrap they're you know really gone to town on the insulation on the uh, secondary windings there and then clearly the feedback coil wrapped you know, it's not a huge number of turns, only a small number of turns, but that's wrapped over the top of the secondary. And that sense winding is not just wrapped on top of that, by the way, it's sort of sandwiched in between. I've that peeled off a little bit there, broken that off, but it's sandwiched in between two mylar wraps like that. So they've really gone to town on the uh, insulation there, as you'd expect, because that's the big requirement for these uh, medical uh, transformers and medical uh, power supplies is the isolation. That's everything. And I don't really need to go much further than this because we can see pretty much everything. There's the primary winding in there. And then look at, you know, I'll get my knife here. Look at that layer of insulation there. It's not just, it does, it kind of looks like mylar tape from the top, but it's, uh, it's not. It's some other you know, hugely thick compared to mylar tape um, wrapping on there, and it's it's almost it's almost spongy like. It's uh yeah, it's rather unusual, but that's where they're getting all their isolation right there between primary and secondary. And yep, um, yeah, they haven't skimped. Come to think of it, this spongy stuff on the top is probably to you know ensure that. The secondary winding here doesn't sort of, you know, stray across to the right over to the side here and get close to like a uh, gap. So it's almost like it's a creepage distance between the primary, uh, the primary down in here. It has to get around the edge under that tape, the creepage all the way, and then through this thick insulation on the secondary winding right through so i think that's what it's doing is increasing the creepage distance there ah oh, beautiful that rubber stuff is really quite quite thick i'm very very impressed with that and they looks like they've probably got another mylar wrap under that as well jeez talk about gilding the lily 
And just as a very quick comparison, let's take a quick look inside another one, which is not a medical grade one, but you know, hey, it's UL listed. It's got all the requisite, you know, TUV approvals, all that sort of stuff. Once again, five volts. It's a bit higher uh, current than the other one, which is uh, two and a half amps, but let's take a quick look inside. And there you go, check out that. The first thing that strikes you is the caps on cap. Oh man, one hung low all the way. Um, bigger heat sinking, of course, because this is a higher current one, but still a, a five volt output uh, supply. And it just looks pretty crusty, doesn't it? And uh, so let me whip the board out and uh, have a look on the underside. And here we go, check it out. You can see that the uh, here is the primary uh, side over here. Yeah, they've got nice... Uh, isolated uh, slots there between the, here we go, between the uh, diode bridge, between the individual wires. So, you know, it's all nicely, uh, you know, laid out and spaced. And here is the primary uh, of the transformer, the secondary of the transformer, huge gap in there. No problems, got another isolation slot down in here. Here's our optocoupler across here. And there's our uh, suppression cap across there because this one does actually have a suppression cap and there's the opto coupler tucked away down in there looks a bit dodgy but i mean i've seen worse than that so that's a relatively i guess you could call that a reasonable example of a cheap one that opto coupler down in there doesn't instill a lot of confidence l0452 well yeah i couldn't even get data on that uh, sucker at a quick uh check but uh, yeah notice the uh y-class suppression cap between that primary and secondary there there we go there it is across there and there's our opto coupler there you know it, it it's okay i mean it's you know it's all right for just a regular consumer grade supply but this one simply wouldn't cut it as a medical grade isolation not a chance and this transformer well it's not instilling a lot of confidence in me that's for sure so yeah let's see if and it won't fully tear it apart but let's have a look this is the uh, secondary side over here you can tell by the thicker uh, wires of course the higher current and the uh, primary side over here looks like it's got a couple of windings and we've got a similar thing happening here we've got the outer sense wire uh, wedged between two uh, well this isn't mylar it's some other sort of uh, tape and uh, just wedge between that on the outside of the secondary. So you'd have your sense wind in here, then your secondary, then your primary in the core. And we've got the secondary winding coming here, and then there's another wrap for the secondary winding going in there. But what it's all about is the insulation in there between the primary, which you can see, which is the red color uh, enamel coated wire, and uh, the secondary, which is in there. So they're probably just going to have more wraps of this uh, yellow tape. And yeah, you can see it there. There we go. I won't bother taking it apart any further. But you can see there's just a wrap or two of that yellow tape plus the enamel on the two uh, windings, of course. And there's, see, there's nothing stopping it sort of like, you know, creeping over the, uh, you know, right to the edge here. And, you know, how you wind that tape, it might be a bit thinner on the edge or it might not be there, there at all. Depends on how you can control your wrapping during production and stuff like that. So there's no creepage distance like we saw on the uh you know or with with this uh sponge tape here no creepage didn't large creepage distance like that around uh the edge of the tape and back over between primary and secondary so yeah no contest there in terms of uh primary secondary um isolation and of course the medical one had this really thick uh rubber insulation there between the primary and the secondary let alone the uh the sponge creepage thing so none of that you find on this uh consumer one chalk and cheese really yep if i'm going to trust my life to something it's going to be this one and of course you do with these medical things that's the whole point so it's not that these are you know inherently more reliable although that might be part of the spec it's all about the isolation between primary and secondary and you can see it in spades inside the uh, construction of the transformer, which is where it's all at, and the very nice, uh, you know, quality brand uh, rated and meet the standard Vache opto couplers in the isolation slots, and that's what it's all about, and that's why this has been given medical uh, type approval and is, um, you know, approved for use with medical appliances, and, you know, a cheap thing like this just isn't going to cut the mustard. So if you enjoyed that, please give the video a big thumbs up. That would be really appreciated. And uh, please 
comment and subscribe and you know all that jazz that us uh, video bloggers say at the end of any video and as always uh, data sheets will be linked down below if you want to check out the data sheets for uh, parts used in this thing and also a link to the uh, EV blog forum discussion as well but you're welcome to leave comments on the blog or on YouTube I do read them all or I attempt to anyway and reply where possible catch you next time